All right, in this video, let's talk about the three beginner skills that can take anybody from zero to $100,000 front-end developer. These are the skills that you are going to need to break into the industry. These are the skills that you are going to need to be competent at your first job and eventually level up and start making more and start progressing, so on and so forth, All right? So if you don't know me, my name is Jake. I'm an ex-Amazon engineer, and I'm making these videos for free to show you exactly what did work, what didn't work, what I'm actually doing to earn $100,000 remotely as a front-end engineer in 2025. All right, so if you don't know me, let's let's go ahead and get into my background. I'll tell you a little bit about myself and I'll tell you what all this looks like, right? When I was first learning how I got into the industry, what different pay bands were and so on and so forth, right? So started out as a kid, I was really obsessed with, with two things, right? I played baseball and I played RuneScape, right? And so I would play RuneScape for, gosh, I would play infinite hours a day. Like when I wasn't playing baseball or I wasn't in school and it was summer, I would play for like 12, 16 hours a day. I was obsessed, right? So not an amazing thing, but this was kind of the start of getting decent at computers, right? So if you don't know what RuneScape is, if I didn't say that already, it's an online video game, basically MMORPG, if you know what that is, but RuneScape was pretty popular uh, when I was growing up. So I would spend so much time here. This was all my time. I was just playing on a computer. And so if that's you, it's like if you play Call of Duty, if you play RuneScape, if you play, I don't know what the games are these days, because I'm not actively playing video games. But if you find yourself obsessed with video games, it's like you might be in the right place here, because that's kind of where all this started. In high school, I wasn't really playing video games, I was too busy with, with everything else, right? But in high school, that's when I was first introduced to some basic HTML and CSS. I had never written a line of code before. To be honest, I wasn't that interested in it. I learned very quickly that I was pretty proficient at it from a young age, right? This was like 12, 16 hour days. So I was spending all my time on that stupid game. But high school, yeah, I was introduced to HTML and CSS. Obviously, at this time, I was maybe 16 years old, 17, 18, I don't know. This was not a career in my mind. This was just like, hey, I need this class to like graduate. So I'm going to take it. It's kind of interesting. It's kind of cool. Completely forgot about it. Didn't even know you could be like a software engineer. Around that time, I think I read an article. I came across an article of some Stanford grad that was going to work as a computer science major or as a software engineer at Google. And I read what they were making out of college. And I was, I remember I was 16. There was an article about how they're about to make six figures, you know, as a 20 year old or whatever. And I was like, oh my gosh, if that could be me, that would be insane. And so what I came to learn is like, there are a bunch of jobs out there for software engineers, for front end developers that do pay these awesome salaries. And so early on in college, I figured out, it's like, okay, well, how can I be that? What have the people done before me? And how can I recreate those steps to actually do that? Obviously, I didn't think that much for foresight ahead, but I was like, hey, I'm pretty good at this. This major's in demand. Why not? Let's try this. So in college, uh, that's what I did. I'm not going to get into too much detail here, but took more coding, studied computer science, and basically landed a few internships here. First internship, I was landing $15 an hour as an IT intern. Wasn't doing anything too complex here. I was writing basic scripts to help the business automate processes. I was not smart here. I did not even know what an API was. Literally got the job pretty luckily uh, just by talking to people, right? I was connected to a person at the company, ended up giving me an opportunity. I think I made like five, six grand over the course of an entire summer, but I was only like 18 years old. This was more money than I had ever seen in my life before. So I was over the freaking moon. I was over the freaking moon. All right. So second job at a bank. Uh, this was another internship. Started earning about $32 an hour. Um, here I was writing React code. So this was the first introduction to kind of front end code, um, uh, that I had experienced like in a professional setting, right? I had, I was working under a senior engineer and I was kind of on my own team. So there was a lot of self-learning, a lot of, um, Hey, I need to actually learn this on my own. Uh, this guy's going to teach me. He's going to help mentor me, but, uh, you know, it's, it's kind of up to you to learn. And that's a common theme throughout software engineering, throughout front end development in this coding career is that you, you have to go and learn a lot of things yourself. So like, if you're seeing this, you're like, oh, you know, if I'm trying to get in this industry and I don't have a college degree, can I do it? Yes, absolutely. You do not need the college degree because as a matter of fact, uh, what I'll talk about here in a second is like all my best job opportunities, they came from skills that I did not learn in college, right? Uh, studying computer science in college, there's a lot of theory. One, it takes four years. Two, there's a lot of theory. It's not necessarily immediately practical. Uh, and three, it's very expensive, right? It's very expensive. So would it be even worth it to do college nowadays? I don't know. Uh, I, I really don't know, right? If you're just trying to start making money as quickly as possible, I don't even know if it's worth it necessarily. But um, I did it and it was valuable to me, but it did take a long time. I think nowadays I could do it quicker, but that's neither here nor there. Point being, all the most valuable skills are out there. You can learn them for free. You can, you know, obviously pay someone to speed them up if you want to learn quicker or whatever, but they're all out there. And that's kind of the common theme throughout this coding career is like, you're going to have to learn stuff yourself on the fly. Anyways, after this job, I was at a bank who's earning $32 an hour, ended up landing a Amazon internship where I started making about 60 bucks an hour. This was kind of, I don't want to call it full stack. This was mostly a backend internship where I had stood up a micro 
microservice for Amazon basically to cut cost to make the business more efficient in a very specific way. Uh, I was helping Alexa data scientists basically to speed up a pipeline so that they could save money on labor. Okay, so that's kind of my backgrounds. After these, that's when I transitioned into full time role. And that's, you know, kind of where I've been making 100 grand plus consistently since I graduated school or since I've kind of been working full time. So that's my background here. I'd imagine a lot of you probably find some similarity in, you know, you grind on the computer, you're obsessed with whatever. That's kind of been a common theme throughout my life is like, whatever I do, 150% in it. I get obsessed with things, right? And coding has been my obsession for the last uh, several years now. So without further ado, let's actually cover these three beginner skills that you're going to need if you want to start earning this kind of money. If you're looking for the remote lifestyle or whatever, this is exactly what you're going to need need to be able to do the number one thing as a front-end developer that you will be doing frequently so there's nowhere to hide this is what you got to know how to do this is the most common like activity at your work if you want to call it that especially as a entry-level engineer you have to be able to turn a design into code right there's no there's no shortcutting this there's no getting around this this is what you will be doing a lot of time as a front-end engineer so what that actually means is like the way software development works in the industry you tend to work with three people, right? So there's there's three people uh, and they tend to work in pods, right? So there is a PM, this stands for product manager. There is a designer and then there is the engineer. So here's kind of how this works, right? The product manager figures out, they marry business needs with engineering capability and weighing those trade outs, right? So what does the business want to do? The business wants to make money ultimately, right? They want profit so that they can pay their engineers so that they can take home money, right? They want to make money, right? So it is the PM's job to figure out what to build and why to build it, right? Let's say, you know, we got my fancy store here, my fancy store here, and I, I sell widgets on my store. Well, uh, what if we need to build an email capture mechanism so that we can sell more of our units? What if we need to build another page of our store so that we can sell even more units or unlock a new segment of our business, right? It's the PM's job to figure out what to actually build. And they're going to turn that into written requirements. And a lot of places will call this a PRD. I don't even know what PRD stands for, to be honest, other than that's a very commonly used uh, acronym. So they'll turn that into written requirements. It's kind of funny. I should know that. And what the designer will then do right? So it flows from PM to designer. The designer will take these written requirements, those ideas, and they'll turn it into an actual design. After which, once that design is made, so let's call this the design. Once that design is made, then it gets passed off to engineering where somebody's got to go and build the thing. Okay. So at this point, if there is front end requirements, uh, the front end engineer or front end engineers who will be working on this will take that design and they'll start to turn it into code. Okay, so they'll start to turn it into code. So we'll call this front end code. And then if there's back end engineers that are needed for this project, the back end engineer will take the back end work and they'll start working on that. All right, so they'll start working on that. So back end engineer, usually that involves making updates to an API. If you're going to be a front end engineer that you, you won't even worry about that too much, but the front end engineer will start taking this design, building out the UI, building out the UX, uh, and then consuming whatever this API is that the back end developer has built. Okay, so. Uh, that's kind of the flow of how this works, right? So you can very quickly see how you will fit into this pipeline here. It's basically a pipeline that goes from PM to design and then design to engineers. And then there's a lot of places we'll have what's called a QA, uh, quality assurance that just makes sure the work's good before customers actually see it, okay? So uh, number one skill that you need to be able to do as a front-end engineer is be able to write this front-end code. You gotta be able to take the design, turn it into code, be able to use this API and then you know actually make meaningful code. Okay. And so when you hear, hear people talk about like full stack engineers, this is what they're talking about right now. All right. Uh, a lot of places, like especially the bigger places, they'll, they'll hire, uh, specialized developers, which means they'll only have front end developers or only have back end developers. But if you want to go work at like a startup or a smaller company, they can't afford to pay for these specialties, right? They want somebody that can do it all. So that's what, that's where you hear about, uh, what's called full stack developers, people that can write both front end and back end code. Uh, they can do this whole stack here and ship something off. Okay. And that's why full stack developers are very variable. But as somebody that's just getting into the industry, it can be very overwhelming to try to learn everything at once. And honestly, I don't recommend it when you're just, you know, trying to get into the industry. So uh, that's why we focus on front end code. It is the easiest. It is the most accessible way to actually break into the industry. 
And by the way, you can watch the rest of the video. I'm going to cover the other three skills, but I just want to leave a note that, you know, if you're trying to break into this industry, you don't know what to do or you want quicker results so that you can start earning a awesome income remote. Go ahead and click the link down below in the description, book in a call, and we can talk one-on-one -on -one about how you can do that quicker. So without further ado, let's get into the second step here. So you got to be able to turn a design into code. The second thing that you need to be able to do, it comes straight from what we were just talking about, all right? It's being able to get in post to an API, okay? So your backend developer is going to give you API endpoints that one, you can either get data from or you can post data to. And what does this look like in practice? Let's say you log into Google Drive and what do you see immediately? You see all of your files, okay? So these are all of your files. Now, let me ask you this. How do you think Google knows which files to display? All right, because after all, they store the files of hundreds of millions of people across the world. All right, how do you think they know what files to display? Well, they store those files associated with a particular user in the database, all right? But how do they actually get those files? They get them from an API, okay? So it would be the front-end developer's job to be like, hey, we need to use the API to get a specific user data. That would be an example of using an API to get data, okay? Um, here would be an example of actually posting to an API, right? So using this Google Drive example, let's say, for example, in the next scene right here, it's like, let's say a user uploads a file, all right? So let, let's say they upload a new song, like a new music track or a new video, right? Well, that's got to go up to the cloud, right? That's got to go up to, you know, Google's backend so that it can be stored in the database and whatever. Excuse my ugly cloud here. That's pretty nasty. Um, but this would be an example of a post request, right? You're going to post that data up to the cloud so that the backend can do what it needs to do to actually store that information associated with that user so that next time they log in or immediately, they can go and actually, I'm going to get rid of that, they can go and actually see their new video or song or whatever that they uploaded, okay? So um, this would be getting data, this would be posting data, right? So as a front-end developer, you're gonna be doing this very frequently, right? Uh, to the point where it's, it, you know, it's just very natural. It's not, it's not even something you think about, right? You're gonna be getting data from an API, you're gonna be posting data to an API. You gotta be able to use an API, you gotta be very comfortable around that. So in practicality, right, you know, if you're trying to practice your skills here, just look up free APIs on the internet. I know like the most common one, the, the tried and true build, build your own project is like a weather app or a to-do list or something like that. But a weather app, usually there's free APIs out there that you can consume. You can practice getting data from. Uh, I don't know if you can post to them, but that's an example of how you can first get your feet wet with APIs. Okay. So um, that is something you should feel comfortable. So one, translating design into code. Two, getting posting from an API, okay? That should be pretty straightforward so far. Uh, and, and the third and final skill, right? And obviously there's a million skills that you need. These are the three main ones, right? These are the three main ones that you need is state management, okay? What does this actually mean in practice, okay? Let me give you an example here. Imagine you are logging into netflix.com. Okay, what is going to be displayed right there? Okay, so there's going to be a username, there's going to be a password, there's going to be a remember me button, and then there's going to be a actual login, right? So we'll call this login. This is going to be username, and this is going to be pass, and this is just going to be the remember me button, right? So this is a checkbox. So this is the initial state. There's no text in here, whatever. What actually happens when you go to log in, all right? So first, you're going to get this page, you're going to realize, oh, okay, boom, it's you know, it's an empty form, all right? What happens when the user starts to type in the box? Okay, so they start typing in their username. So, you know, they type in cheek, whatever, you know, their username is. They type in super secret, secret password. Yes, they want to remember me. And then they click login. Well, ha what happens? How do you actually handle when they click this login button? What is the site supposed to do? Is it supposed to animate? Is there supposed to be a hover state? Where are you supposed to send the data? So on click of this, there's going to be a handler that says, hey, let's send that data up to the API, up to, you know, if you want to call it the cloud or whatever. Let's send Jeek, let's send secret, and let's send this checkbox as data up through our API, right? And so you can see very quickly how like APIs become important, why you need to be able to do that. Let's send that data up to the API. And then let's say the cloud or the backend says like, hey, look, um, that's bad data. That's just wrong. 
okay? That's wrong. What do you actually do with the form now? How do you communicate that um, state to the user, right? Do you clear out Jeep? Do you clear out secret? Do you clear out this checkbox? Do you show an error state? Do you show this login button being read? And so that's what I talk about when I'm talking about state management is like, maybe we clear this out. Maybe we show a big red flame that's like, hey, that was wrong, okay? But that is what we're talking about when we're talking about state management, okay? Being able to dynamically change what's displayed on the page based on what the current state is in the app, all right? That sounds very buzzwordy and very high level, but I can't think of a better way to boil it down than this example. I would imagine you probably understand what I'm talking about here. If you're in an error state or if you're in a success state or you just logged in or you're in a loading state, right? It's just being able to manage the UI UX of those different states, all right? So these are the three main things you gotta be able to do. Got to be able to turn a design into code for one. Got to be able to use an API and then you got to be able to manage this data, right? So I went from beer league referee making nine bucks an hour to, you know, making this kind of money in a remote job. If that's you, if, if you're in a place in life where, you know, you're wanting to one switch careers, maybe make a more stable income, maybe coast into retirement, maybe just have a little more flexibility in your life. I make these free videos for you so that you can get value from them so you can start on your own coding journey. If you would like to go quicker, if you want quicker results, go ahead and tap the link down below in the description. I made a free training for you that you can watch completely for free. It shows you exactly how I did it. You can even book in some time with me so we can speak one-on-one -on -one so I can help you out personally, right? If that's you, go ahead and click the link down below, book in some time with me and I will talk to you soon. Otherwise, thank you for watching, and I look forward to seeing you in the next video.